Welcome back to the TV program, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Dark Tide by Dennis L. McKiernan, book number one in his Iron Tower trilogy. The reason I'm reading this and reviewing them is, I mean, these are some of my favorite books that I had as a kid. I probably read them ten times over as a kid. But the reason I'm doing this is because I, I just read The Children of Huron by J.R.R. Tolkien, and I was in the mood for some just some more epic, epic, legendary fantasy along the same lines as Tolkien. And But I didn't want to read Tolkien. I wanted to read someone else. And Dennis L. McKiernan, I tell you... This is the absolute 100% truth, guys. Dennis L. McKiernan writes epic fantasy more like J.R.R. Tolkien than any other singular author ever on the planet. In fact, the history behind this trilogy, which I've got all three books here, comprises The Dark Tide, The Darkest Day, and Shadows of Doom. Um, this trilogy was originally written as a sequel to The Lord of the Rings. Set in Middle-earth by Dennis L. McKiernan. And um, it was almost published. The, the, published. the people that owned the rights to Tolkien almost published it as a Tolkien, uh, just sort of a something set in the Tolkien universe. And then they were like, well, maybe that's a, not a good idea. And then they kind of backed out of it. And then so Dennis McKiernan wanted to publish the books anyway. So he changed the names of the characters and the locations and reimagined the map and the world and uh, kept the story about the same, but just said it in his own universe, which is called the Mythgar, Mythgar universe. And uh, that's kind of the history of how Dennis L. So when I say it reads exactly like you would, I mean, if you read this, you would think J.R.R. Tolkien wrote, wrote it. It's, it's just written in the same exact flavor and language and everything that Tolkien. So that's the history behind that. Now, another thing that's cool is these covers, because we always review the covers first. Now, these came out in 1985, and these covers are done by none other than Alan Lee, the guy that did all of the all of the set design and stuff for uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings movies. Not only that, but he does all most of the covers for all of the Tolkien stuff, all the Tolkien calendars, all the Tolkien novels. I mean, that's another tie into and and let's let's take a closer look at these covers because we've got the main image here, the main Alan Lee painting of this battle between some orc-like creatures and some elf-like creatures and then on the outside we've got this wonderful scroll work of these thorns and this forest this dark forest and thorns and it and it wraps around and you and then that's also got that and it's on each and every book even the darkest day it's got the same and then when you put all of them together the trilogy looks really super nice like that now if you want to get these books, they're hard to find because these all came out in 1985. They're long out of print. However, there is an omnibus version that has all three of the books combined. If you do want to get that, you can probably still get that at, you know, your local Amazon website. So let's talk about the book itself, the stories. Um, like I said, it's patterned after uh, Middle Earth, uh, patterned after Tolkien. Um, there's a map even in here that, uh, you know, you, you know, he, uh, just switched if I can find the map. Yes, there it is. It's coming up. There's the map used to, used to be middle earth, but then he had to switch it to his own thing. Anyway, it's about, um, the, um, little folk, not hobbits, but here they're called, um, uh, Buccan warriors, B-U-C-C-A-N warriors. They're, uh, they're not, um, Hobbits, I think I already said that. Uh, and we get f a bunch of them to begin with. And we get in there, live, they live in a place called the Boskydales. And it's Tucker B. Underbank. He's our one of our main guys. And then Danil Bramblethorn. Oh, not Danil. Danner. Danner Bramblethorn. So Tucker B. Underbank, Danner Bramblethorn, Hob, Banderell, 
and Tarpy Wiggins. They're sort of our Sam, Frodo, Merry, and Pippin of the story. Uh, they are little people, little elf-like people. Um, they're called, sometimes they're called Buckin, sometimes they're called Waros. I think they call themselves Buckin, but everybody else calls them Waros or something like that. Um, but they live in the Bosky Dells, and there's rumors of wolves, because wolves haven't been seen, and there's rumors that wolves are now, you know, stalking people out of the forest, and that there's men. They don't see a lot of men in there, and the men are sort of, strange men are sort of roaming around the forests. And then they're shooting stars, and they haven't seen those in a while. And there's, a, and there's the rumors of an evil growing in the north in the wastes of Gron, like a dark lord. The legend of Modru of Grand is coming back, and... Uh, I think you see a lot of the similarities here. Well, anyway, the uh, the four guy, the four little waros, the four little people, we can call them hobbits, but they're little people. But they're more elf-like than hobbits. They're like uh, they're kind of like a cross between the Lord of the Rings hobbits and Dragonlance Kender. It's pretty much what they are. Um, but they, uh, but Tucker B. Danner, Hob, and Tarpy join the Thornwalkers, because the Bosky Dales is sort of surrounded by this wall of thorns. That's why we've got the thorns every and it's a big huge wall of thorns. It's just like a big sort of like castle wall. It's like a Mirkwood forest of thorns and forest and and so that but but they kind of have little guard outposts along this wall. Kind of like in Game of Thrones they have the ice wall. Well they've got the thorn wall. And these guys become thorn walkers. And they are led by uh, a more experienced uh, sort of army guy named Patrell Rushlock. So there's five now. There's five. You know, we got the four from the Bosky Dells and then their leader, Patrell. And they go off just amongst these rumors of men and wolves and Grand, the land of Grand and the legend of Modru springing up. The, 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 they go off to their first outpost amongst the Thornwall, and I will tell you that's where the adventure begins, and I'm going to say of the five Waros slash Buccan Waros, warriors that go, these little guys, I'm not going to say, one of the things that's uh, that's kind of harrowing, and I, I appreciate this about these books, is McKiernan isn't afraid to just uh, kill characters off that you think are going to go, of those five, I'm going to tell you, not all of them make it to their destination. And that's when the adventure starts. And um, that's when they go beyond the Thornwall. And they meet people like King Arion and Prince Igon and Prince Galen and Princess Laura Lynn. And they go in, and they're involved in great battles and quests and adventures. And that's just in the first book. And they become, almost by the end of the first book, the survivor, the Whichever one of the five warriors, whichever group, I won't tell you, some of the Waros survive and they become legends in themselves. Even by the end of book one, the land of men and elves and dwarves and orcs and o or orgs. I, I, what are the uh, bad guys called there? Uh, anyway, it's not listed on the back, but, um, you know, in my books, I call my orcs ogles. He calls them um, G-H-O-Ls or something like Gauls or something like that. Anyway, but there's a lot of hobgoblins, trolls, and orcs and stuff that, uh, of course, the evil lord employs in his quest to take over the world. And, uh, of course, our young, our little people have to fight amongst the men and elves and dwarves to stop all this. There's lots of dark castles, lots of grand battles, lots of quests. And that's just in book one. And we're not even talking about... Um, what's coming next because I'm going to be rereading all of these because these books are these are the these are some of those books like Dragonlance the Shannara Chronicles the David Eddings the Raymond Feist these are some of those books that I read as a kid over and over and over and over I mean I almost have all of it memorized um even though I can't remember the names of the orcs I got most of it memorized but anyway I absolutely adored rereading these. I mean, it's like I said, I read them 10 times over as a kid. Haven't really read them since. Um, but it just took me back to just how delightful of a world McKiernan created with the help of uh, Tolkien. And it's just superb. I absolutely love it. I absolutely think it's just for people who love Tolkien and want something just exactly like that with characters and storylines that just sort of follow that map 
just absolutely you need to get and you need to start reading Dennis L. McKiernan. He has written not only this trilogy, but I've got back behind me probably about a dozen novels that he wrote. I think he's probably written about 15 novels in the land of Mythgar. Um, but these were the first ones he wrote. And I think the best. I'm giving this a solid, solid 10 out of 10 just for pure nostalgic reasons and just for how much I enjoyed rereading it. 